It doesn't make the virus worse, it might diminish our response to it. As the coronavirus spread across the globe, so many weird and wacky ways to apparently treat the infection have exploded all across social media and the internet. So today, Britain's most trusted TV doctor, Dr. Hilary Jones, is here to myth bust for us. And Dr. Hilary, this is important because I know personally, I'm getting hundreds of these messages and I never know what to believe. So first myth, drinking water every 15 minutes can help prevent coronavirus infection. Absolutely not, no way it can. When you swallow water, you take the water down uh, into the uh, acid of the stomach uh, and, uh, and any, any virus or bacteria is often killed there. But of course, the virus is in your eyes, your nose, your throat, it's not completely washed away by drinking water. So that's a complete myth. Next myth, heat can kill the virus, so people should drink hot water, take hot baths and avoid ice cream. Absolute rubbish, again, uh, the virus is in your nose, it might be in your eyes, in the back of your throat, but drinking in a hot drink, unless it's enough to scald and kill you, is not going to kill the virus, so that's a myth as well. Next myth, the virus will die off when the warm weather comes. Unfortunately, it's, this is not like seasonal flu. This is a completely different virus. And if you look at the global pandemic in countries around the world, which are currently in their summer, they're not seeing a particular difference in the prevalence of the virus. So hot weather will not necessarily do anything to reduce the severity of this virus. Another myth, and this is one that I'm getting constantly on WhatsApp, ibuprofen makes coronavirus worse. Well, it, it doesn't make the virus worse. It might diminish our response to it. It's an anti-inflammatory, like many of the um, group of um, the family of anti-inflammatories, and we need inflammation in the body to fight the virus to some extent. So it might make our response a little weaker. The evidence is, is, is only slight and marginal, but better to take paracetamol than ibuprofen. Next myth, surgical masks protect you from the infection. Well, it depends on the quality of the mask. The only mask that really has any proven value are the masks that uh, doctors in intensive care and critical care are using. They're airtight um, and they're high quality and they filter out the virus. But ordinary surgical paper masks that you see people wearing in the street really offer very little protection. There's no evidence that they really help because air is coming in from the top, the sides, underneath. And, uh, you know, even if they are coming through the mask themselves, once the mask is moist through exhaled air, probably not beneficial at all. Everyone's wearing them, though, right now, I have to say. Uh, final myth, antibiotics can help treat coronavirus. True they, or false? False. They absolutely can't because we're dealing with a virus and not a bacteria. Great. I enjoyed that. Myth busting with Dr. Hillary. Now, let's kick off with your questions. Julie Berry, first up. Hi Dr Hilary, my son is currently home from uni and back working at our local supermarket as a shelf stacker and classed as a key worker. Are there any precautions he should take when finishing his shift, such as washing his uniform and showering when he gets home? Look forward to hearing what your answer is, thank you. When he comes home he should uh, uh, wash his hands immediately and it's not a bad idea for him to uh, uh, wash his clothes uh, and have a shower. That means that any possible contamination of the virus on his clothing is, is dealt with and got rid of, and he's protecting the rest of the household by doing so. Ian Brooks has a question that I've been desperate to ask myself. Uh, can drinking alcohol help oh, fight the virus? Dan, I wish it did, uh, but there's nothing to suggest that drinking alcohol has any beneficial effects. But it's good well, on your hands. It's great right? on your hands if it's over 60% proof, but we're, we're not even talking vodka. Vodka's about 37% proof, so you can imagine uh, you'd be, have to be drinking spirits all day long to even you know, have any effect on the virus in your throat at all, but no, the answer is no. Don't rely on alcohol to protect you. Sorry about that, Ian. Uh, Joseph Croft now. Could post coming through my letter box carry the virus and could goods in shops carry the virus? Any surface potentially could carry the virus for a few hours if someone's coughed or sneezed on it or touched it. 
So I think the thing is that the risk is very small, but when you take the post in, you take the letter out of the uh, envelope, you throw the envelope away, or you take anything out of uh, cardboard packaging, you throw the packaging away, uh, you, and then you wash your hands. If you've washed your hands you, uh, properly uh, for 20 seconds and you've done it effectively, then you've got rid of the virus and you, when you put your hands to your face, you're unlikely to transmit any virus to, to uh, your ear, nose and throat. Next question we've been sent in is from Zoe Brunier. Hi, Dr. Hillary. I'm allergic to paracetamol. What should I do if I start to show symptoms? I'm a key worker and wearing all PPE to protect myself and others. I'm just a bit worried. Well, I think if she developed a temperature or, or she developed um, a headache, then codeine would be a good substitute for, for paracetamol. The current advice is to avoid ibuprofen just because it, it, uh, it's, it, it actually uh, reduces your response to the virus because it's an anti-inflammatory and you do want a bit of inflammation. But codeine would be a good alternative. Dawn Howard says, My family and I have been going out for a walk in our local wood and park a few times this week. It's a two-mile drive to get there. There were not many people about and we stayed two metres away from other people. We have been told that we were wrong to do this and we should stay in our immediate neighbourhood. Is this correct? It's correct. Um, you know, just imagine if uh, you're out in a car and for whatever reason you had a car accident. Um, that means police arriving, uh, ambulance crew if necessary who are already busy. And it's just an unnecessary journey that could have repercussions. Uh, also, uh, it means you are over the course of time likely to want to go to a petrol station you're touching the petrol uh, nozzle you've got to talk to the cashier you've got to swipe your card through the machine these are extra contacts which are potentially increasing your risk so why would you do that when you can walk down the road just outside your house stay out of the car is the message from the doctor Sarah Passmore asks and this is a good question given that the grass pollen now out of control in some parts of the UK. Is it true that antihistamines for hay fever lower immunity? If so, should hay fever sufferers take them? No, antihistamines don't lower your immunity whatsoever. What they do is they prevent the release of histamine, which is what causes the bunged up nose and the, uh, and, and the red uh, runny eyes and, and the tickly throats and sometimes the asthma. So antihistamines are fine. Uh, to take. They don't reduce your immunity. I think they've got confused there with, with things that uh, can reduce immunity uh, 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 in other ways. But, but certainly antihistamines are fine to take for hay fever. So you can keep taking your hay fever Absolutely. medication as yep. normal. Excellent news. Next question in from John Clements who says, does pouring boiling water on something kill the virus? Uh, pouring boiling water will certainly kill the virus. Uh, the virus isn't uh, strong enough to withstand that, which is why when we, when we boil vegetables and when we cook our food, the food is absolutely safe to eat. So uh, uh, absolutely boiling water does sterilise. And gain or dodge with the question of the day, the final question of the day, and something I've been desperate to know the answer to. Should I put hand sanitizer on before or after hand cream? Well, I've heard different um, uh, reports on this, but to my way of thinking, if you've got a moisturiser on your hand first, you are preventing the alcohol gel sanitizer from getting to the skin and any virus that's underneath the moisturiser. So my view is that you use the hand sanitizer first, which has to be more than 60% alcohol, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and then uh, if your hands are getting dry as a result of the alcohol, then you put the moisturiser on, uh, on after that. That, to me, is the logical thing to do. We are a nation of red, raw hands at the moment. At the moment, <laughs> there are people getting red, raw hands. Um, of course, you can use moisturiser again uh, later on in between hand sanitizer applications. So it's about looking after your hands, but, but you, know, you, you need the alcohol when you've been touching things or um, uh, there's any possible contamination from hard surfaces to your face. So wait to moisturise a little bit later. That's my advice. Great questions today, and Dr Hillary will be back tomorrow to answer more of what you want to know about coronavirus and ask Dr Hillary Coronavirus Explained. If you have a question for Britain's most trusted TV medic, then you can submit it either at thesun.co.uk forward slash Dr Hillary or on Talk Radio's website, or you can just comment actually on this video right now if you are watching on YouTube, plus Dr Hill's on social media using the hashtag Ask Dr. Hillary. So lots of ways to get in touch and do come back tomorrow for another edition of Ask Dr. Hillary Coronavirus Explained.